Hello, I'm that Italian guy. Today, I am going to showcase a variety of methods to automate complex abilities for monsters or characters in Foundry VTT. We will have a look at some of the most powerful automation modules and I will show you how to integrate your own macros with them. You will find links to all the relevant resources in the video description. We are going to have a look at some of the features for the Lightbringer, a sacred warrior whose inner light ebbs and flows with the battle, the judge of absolution, a mystical sleuth and witch hunter who has to balance conviction with remorse, and a pack of demonic hounds, vicious beasts of living fire whose unstable nature is a double-edged sword. I am well familiar with these classes and monsters because I have helped design them. These are from a project called Hellwatch, Infernal Oath, currently on Kickstarter. You can grab the full stat block for the demonic hounds, together with some more freebies, in the preview sample available on the project page. As always, link in the video description. Let's get familiar with the demonic hound first. These monsters are meant to move in packs and swarm the heroes. They are relatively fragile but have quite a few tricks up their sleeves. Their standard attack is nothing too complex, a bite that inflicts extra fire damage. The meat and potatoes of their skill set comes from the combination of their remaining abilities, fiery presence, will damage anyone who starts its turn next to a hound by a set amount. Inferno Howl is a buff that increases fiery presence's damage value for all the hounds within a certain range. Unstable nature forces the hounds to move in a pack if they don't want to spontaneously combust. Also, when they are defeated for any reason, they explode dealing damage equal to their current fiery presence value. Finally, Fire Essence allows the hounds, naturally immune to fire damage, to be healed by it. This means that a group of demonic hounds will constantly get topped up by the passive damage generated by their fiery presence and actively healed whenever one of them blows up. At any point, feel free to pause the video if you want to read something more in detail. The implementation of Fire Essence would be rather complex if it wasn't for a built-in feature in our first module of the day. And if we are talking foundry and automation, we can't start without talking about MIDI QOL. We have set up an always on active effect on the fiery essence item marking transfer to actor on item equip. The effect itself uses one of the native flags for MIDI QOL absorption, in this case set to fire. The value of one means that the flag is active, while a value of zero would make it inactive. While the hounds have this effect on them, all the incoming fire damage will be converted into healing. Simple as that. MIDI QOL has extensive documentation on its project page, linked in description. Its Discord community is also a veritable trove of resources and the people in the channel are always very helpful. Inferno Howl is a key piece of the kit for the demonic hounds. Every hound in a 30 feet radius gets its fiery presence damage upgraded from 1d6 to 1d8. This directly buffs fiery presence's damage and it increases unstable nature's explosion damage indirectly. The hounds benefit twice from this, since they are healed by the AoE fire damage. A lot of automation revolves around the Inferno Howl buff being present on a hound, but the actual automation on the ability itself is minimal. In fact, the only thing that's is automated is the expiration on the buff. The only active effect applied is a visual indicator for the buff itself, using a module called Token Magic FX. This module adds some nice, and free, visual improvements to tokens, scenes and templates. Its Git page has plenty of links to tutorials and other nice resources. Now that the hounds have been influenced by Inferno Howl, the damage on Fiery Presence must be increased. Being a dice replacement, this is a bit trickier than simply applying a static or dynamic bonus to the item. To do this, we are going to leverage another module, Dynamic Active Effects. In particular, we are going to use the ability to set flags, allowing us to store some arbitrary keys and call their values later. In this example we have set the damage for fiery presence to the value of the dynamic active effect flag called damage dice. We are now going to set the value for this flag. 
we have created an active effect that transfers to actor on item equip and has no expiration. In the effect section, we are going to specify the value for the damage dice flag, using a dynamic active effect evaluation. The value for the flag is determined by a formula. It checks all the effects on the hound and, if it finds one called, Inferno Howl, it evaluates to true, or 1, setting the value to 1d8. Otherwise, it evaluates to false, or 0, and the value is set to 1d6. Dynamic active effects is strictly tied to MIDI QOL, in fact, it is maintained by the same author. The Git page has the usual resources, and MIDI QOL's Discord is as good a place as any to get help with its usage. We are going to automate some of the functions in Unstable Nature next. First of all, its damage is based on the one from Fiery Presence, so we are going to set the same damage dice flag for this one as well. The setup is precisely the same. We are going to leverage a different bit of MIDI QOL next and set up some unuse macros. We are, incidentally, going to use these macros to do something that can be done with MIDI directly, but this is just to demonstrate another method. I have set up two of these unused macros in unstable nature, the first runs before the saves are checked and targets all creatures within 15 feet, excluding defeated ones. The second sets the hound's hit points to zero. For a bit of fun, we can see what happens when we roll the unstable nature item. All the animations and effects in the video are from the free version of Jules and Ben's animated assets and are implemented with automated animations. Time to have a look at what the Lightbringer can do. This character's kit revolves around a unique mechanic called Inner Light. Certain features will dim its light, burdening them with temporary penalties, but other abilities will rekindle its light and have a bigger effect based on how severe the penalties were. We are going to use flags and add and remove stacking active effects to handle most of these features. The setup for Sword of Light is relatively straightforward, in fact, the details section of this item is completely blank. All the juicy details are in the effects section. By the way, you can access these and have a better overview of what they do from the DAE tab on top of the item sheet. The Sword of Light effect provides a Radiant Damage bonus equal to the Lightbringer's Wisdom modifier. The Light Dimmed effect reduces the proficiency bonus of the Lightbringer by 1. It also increases by 1 the value of another arbitrary DAE flag that we have called Dim Value. More on this later. Let's see this in action. When we roll the Sword of Light item, the Lightbringer's token shows both effects, as expected. When we attack with our weapon, we see that our to hit bonus has been reduced by 1, to match the reduced proficiency bonus. And our damage has been increased by 3, to match the Lightbringer's Wisdom modifier. Blazing Lunge is an ability in two parts. The first is a 30-foot teleportation, similar to Misty Step, but requiring an action instead of a bonus action. The second, is an offensive one, all enemies within 5 feet of the landing spot must make a saving throw or become blinded. We are applying the blinded condition by using the built-in 5e1. This ability also applies another stack of the light dimmed effect, reducing the Lightbringer's proficiency bonus by a further one and increasing the dim value flag to 2. We roll the blazing lunge item and we fail to blind either dog, our save DC has been reduced by 1 because of the previous stack of the light dimmed effect. We have also received a second stack of set effect, as expected. This means that the current value for the DAE flag called dim value is set to 2. Ray of Healing is an ability capable of rekindling the light of the character. When the light is rekindled, all the penalties to the Lightbringer's proficiency bonus are removed. The ability that rekindles the light receives a bonus based on the previous dim value. In this case, Ray of Healing allows the character to heal someone by a number of d6s equal to the dim value, right now, it would heal 2d6. Did you know that you can use basic math formulas in the damage field for an item? We can enclose the dim value flag reference in brackets next to the d6 annotation, to roll that many d6s.
This takes care of the amount of healing, but we also want to a. Remove the penalties set by the light dimmed effect and b. Set the dim value flag to zero. Luckily for us, this is extremely simple, because of the way we have set up things, we just need to make sure that Ray of Healing removes all the stacks of the Life Dimmed effect. We can take care of this with a simple unused macro. I have mentioned custom made macros and it's time to see how the sausage is made. We are going to have a look at a modular targeting macro for area of effect abilities that propagate from a token. Once again, this is not the preferred MIDI procedure, I am just explaining an alternate method. I'll provide a link to this macro for your own usage in the video description. This macro is modular, you can comment out or in various parts of it to suit your needs. This part handles the inclusion or exclusion of defeated tokens. This one instead allows a token to target itself when selecting targets. This part uses the name of the tokens as a criteria to target them. Depending on the way you comment in or out these next two parts, you'll target allies, enemies or everyone. This part sets the maximum distance for the targets to be selected. Finally, this last part handles difference in elevation between the tokens. This line is what actually sets the target selection in place. I have used this modular macro to select the targets for the Inferno Howl item. This is a slightly modified version of the name selection part to target all the tokens that share a name with the hound. I have no need for the disposition filter, as the name covers that already. Finally, I have set the distance and height filtering to 30 feet, giving its area of effect a cylindrical shape. Let's have a look at the Judge of Absolution. As the name implies, this character's unique mechanic is their ability to pass judgment on their enemies. If they are successful, their blows are empowered by their righteous wrath, but if they fail, they are racked with doubt. To automate the judgment ability we are going to use another module called Item Macro. With this mod we can roll macros from within the item itself, accessing a variety of built-in variables, like character or item. In this case, we are using several MIDI QOL workflow calls to set a DC for our investigation check and specify an outcome in case of success or failure. If we are successful, we are going to apply the judged effect to the target, otherwise, we are going to add the misjudged effect instead. To handle the effects we are using a module called DFRED's Convenient Effects and its associated panel mod. As always, all relevant links are in the video description. When we select an enemy and we roll the judgment item, we will expect to see an investigation check rolled in chat. Depending on its outcome, we want to see the judged or misjudged effect added to the target. The roll is successful, so the judged effect has been correctly applied. And that's all we have done so far, there is no mechanical bonus tied to this effect right now. The main reason these are effects instead of flags is that we can more easily handle their duration this way, and we want a visual indicator to keep track of things. We are now going to use the judged effect as a condition to trigger the actual bonus. This is tied to the judge using a so-called weapon of purification, in this case a hand crossbow. When the character attacks an enemy marked for judgment with this weapon, it should deal extra radiant damage equal to their proficiency modifier. But, as you can see, there is no active effect or item macro on this weapon. To set this up, we will instead use a module called Build a Bonus. This allows us to set things up using a guided graphic interface instead. It is by far the most user-friendly of the modules we have so far examined if you are unfamiliar with JavaScript. With Build a Bonus, or BAB, for short, you can influence multiple type of roles. In this case, I have set up a damage roll bonus called Judged. The bonus section contains the mechanical effects that we want our BAB to have, in this case, extra radiant damage equal to our proficiency modifier. The configuration section contains all the filters that we have picked from the filters tab, and their details. In this case, 
We want the bonus to apply only to weapon types items, if the target has the judged condition applied to them. Please note that BAB uses conditions, not simple effects, in this filter, so you'll have to make sure your custom effect is marked as such in DFRED's panel. The filter section contains all the possible extra criteria that we could have our bonus depend on, there's quite a few of them. Now that we have set up our BAB, we want to see the extra damage being applied if we attack an enemy marked with the judged condition with our crossbow. And there it is. To test the conditional nature of the BAB, we are now going to remove the judged condition from the hound and repeat the attack. The extra radiant damage is no longer being applied. The modular nature of Foundry VTT allows us to automate complex abilities with a plethora of different methods. A full tutorial on each of them would make this video tens of hours long, but hopefully you have now a good idea of what options are available to you. The best way to proceed from here is to check out the project pages for each of the modules to access their tutorials and resources. If you need help with something specific, you can also check out the Foundry VTT Discord server, in particular the module discussion and macro polo channels. And of course, the individual mod Discord servers are often the best place to seek assistance. Finally, if you have liked the design of these creatures, you can check out the Kickstarter page for Hellwatch Infernal Oath and grab the free preview PDF. Hope you enjoyed. Once again, I am that Italian guy. Stay tuned for more Foundry VTT tips and tutorials. Until next time.